Relationship Advice Update My, 25 male, girlfriend, 22 female, wants to share our incomes. Thing is, I make roughly 7 times as much, advice please. Original Story So here is the deal, me and my girlfriend have been together for a little under 3 years, and have been living together for a few months. My girlfriend takes college classes and works part time, I finished college 2 years ago, quickly got hired by the company I did my internship at, and within a year, I got a promotion and a large pay raise and I am now making roughly 150k a year, while she makes 20k a year. Now, she moved in with me a few months ago into the place I bought, so I pay nearly all costs, mortgage, electricity, water etc. The only things she pays herself are non-essentials, like Spotify, phone bill, Netflix and so forth. Now recently, we got into a huge fight where she demanded we pool our money together, and spend what is left after essential costs together. Whereas currently, I pay basically every essential in my own stuff, use a bit to enjoy myself, and put the rest into my savings. Now, she seems to be jealous I got a lot more to spend, which is not really true since after monthly costs, I put the majority in my savings account. In my eyes, she already gets an easy ride, and honestly, she is just crap with the money she does have. She spends it on crap like stupidly expensive clothes, and then complains she is broke at the end of the month. So what do I do? I hate to put money in the way of our relationship, but if I am honest, I am questioning my relationship as there is no way I am going to let her essentially spend my salary on stupid stuff. Now for the top advice before reading the update. I too would like a free 65k plus a year. So does my savings account. She wants to spend the rest? 60k? Dude. Girlfriend, there is no way I am going to pull money with you because you are not responsible with your own money, let alone with mine. I already pay your expenses and am not going to sacrifice more money so you can spend more. Financial responsibility is important to me, and I hope you start making it important to you as well. Yeah, the fact that the only option she sees for the money is to spend it, is crazy. I ain't saying she's a gold digger. I say you propose a counter offer. Both of you keep your accounts separate, and she pays for half of the monthly living expenses, might be a good one, haha. Ha. Edit, so, there are so many comments, I am having a hard time keeping up with it. If I don't respond, know that I am trying to at least read your comment. But currently, when I read and respond to one comment, I get 10 more, haha. Ha. I just want to thank everyone for their responses, from the ones who yell a gold digger to the ones who take a middle ground approach. Even those who yell about MGTOW or something, and those who are in the opinion I need to give her all my money because of a pink tax or something. All advice is appreciated and gives me an extra light to view this in. I had not expected my post to blow up like this though ha ha ha. And now for the update. So, I figured since the post sort of blew up a 3 weeks ago, and people requested me to make an update to tell them what I ended up doing. Well here goes. Well in the shortest way possible, I ended up breaking up with her. I realized in part thanks to some good advice I had gotten. There was more that was bothering me other than the financial part. Thing is, when thinking to myself in the next few days, I felt myself combing over every little detail of our relationship, and quickly realized I was putting in way more than what I got back. No, I am not saying I am some perfect saint, but I do think I deserve someone who appreciates what I already do, especially when what I already do, so vastly outweighs what she did in our relationship. Also a big one was the apparent maturity gap between the two of us, which I looked over with my rose tinted in love glasses. Whereas I have changed as a person from who I was when we started dating, she is still pretty much the same identical person, and without trying to badmouth her, that is a person you can be without any issues when you're between 15 and 20, not when you are in a committed relationship, thinking about having kids at some point, managing your own finances, and planning for the future. And that brings me to the largest issue there, planning. I am a planner, I look out for the future. I am not opposed to wasting some money to do fun stuff while I am young, but I don't want to risk ending up broke and unhappy when I am older because I refuse to get serious in my youth, and this is where our personal views seem to clash to an extent where the good no longer outweighs the bad. She constantly lives in the moment, spends what she can spend and is sort of used to an easy ride, where the biggest things she ever had to worry about are her grades. But for me, I have faced financial issues since I was young, so I know the value of money and I know that planning can spare you a lot of hurt. I am not saying either of our views are superior or better, I am saying when you are supposed to be a partnership, 
but you wildly differ on the most basic foundations of that partnership, there is not much hope. As a result, I realized I did not see myself getting more committed to her, which means we sort of hit a roadblock in our relationship. I mean, I am not a fan of marriage from the get-go, but after such a long time, if you are not even remotely considering it, there is probably a larger issue. This argument about finances brought up a whole load of other issues for me, and honestly, I sort of started to dread what in my mind looked like me being expected to fund a lifestyle, I, from the ground up, do not agree with. I realized I was losing my own self-worth by accepting this sort of stuff, and I realized the fact we had an argument about my money, and her demanding to spend half of it, made me feel like a glorified ATM. Now the breakup was really messy and her dad was a rock during the entire thing. He calmed the situation down a lot, despite him really hating what was happening, but I think he understood. I can't say I am not gutted about all of this. After all, this is someone I was with for roughly three years, and getting used to not having her or her family, who I was really close to, is difficult. But in the end, after the initial dust settled, I sort of feel liberated and a lot happier than I did a few weeks ago. I wish her nothing but the best in the future, and I know it has to be without me. As for me, I sort of feel like I get to start over, hopefully find someone a lot more suited to me in the future. But I won't be actively looking for one, as honestly, being single after such a long time in a relationship feels nice. I get to focus what little free time I have on myself, which is something I have not been able to do for a long time. I get to indulge in my hobbies properly and so forth. Anyhow, I want to thank everyone for their advice and if I was rude to anyone, I am sorry, but at the time, I was in a crappy emotional position. But I am doing a lot better now, so whether you figured I was a douche and completely disagreed with me, or whether you think I was a good fella and figured I was right, or somewhere on the extremes or in the middle, thanks for your advice. Now for some comments. I would also like to share incomes with you. Ha, you and many others I think, given the private chats I got. This is surprisingly articulate. Kudos for the honest introspection. Thank you, took me a few days though. Very well written. I think you made the right choice. People change, and sometimes it's better to just move on. I just got out of a 5 year relationship, and I only realized how unhappy I'd been for the last couple of years when I was out of it. Was like a huge weight just disappeared. Also was like, holy crap. I have all of the closets now. After she moved out. Yeah, my closets are empty AF right now. I'm glad to read this update. You seem smart and kind, but without being a pushover. You'll be fine, and will find someone with the same goals as you. Good luck. Thanks, I was a bit of a pushover though, I am just glad I realized it so I can work on it. Now for the next story. Update, am I the a-hole for refusing to sell my rental properties at my fiancé's request? Original post, two years ago, I, 36 male, proposed to my fiancé, 30 female, and our wedding is going to be this coming summer. When we met, we both owned properties. She owned a pretty typical luxury townhouse, and I owned two properties in the inner city. We both agreed, that when it was time to cohabitate, we'd live in her condo. I own an old two up two down duplex in a neighborhood that butts right up against an old industrial area, which I was living in until we moved in together, and on the next block, I also own a 4,000 square feet concrete block industrial building. I got them as part of a screaming package deal about 12 years ago, when you couldn't give property away in that neighborhood. I now rent the duplex to a couple of Hispanic families, and God I hope they never leave me, best renters ever, and I rent half of the factory building to a guy who does HVAC, and the other half to some microbrewery hipsters. The powers of gentrification have been at work in this hood for about half the time I've owned these places and I'm making buku bucks on these rentals. I could lose my job tomorrow and not even blink. My fiancé does not see it this way. Ever since we've moved in together, she's been pestering me to sell the places. It's been ramping up the closer we get to the wedding. I keep telling her that as long as I own these places, it's a practically guaranteed third source of income, and would be invaluable if either of us hit a rough patch job-wise. She doesn't see it that way though, all she sees is a potential big pile of liquid cash that can go towards wedding, honeymoon and upgrades to the living situation after. We had the biggest blow up yet about it last Saturday, and I kind of lost it. I'm a saver and she's a spender, and I said that to her in far less pleasant terms, and also mentioned the amount of credit card debt she has, and since then, things have been pretty frosty. Am I the a-hole for refusing to sell my second income? 
Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole. And I'm letting you know now, a wedding will not stop the two of you from fighting over finances. It sounds like you both handle money very differently, and she also seems as though she's eyeballing your cash, as a way of supporting her lifestyle. If I were you, I'd sort this out before getting married. Yep, she's seeing that potential pile of money and how she can spend it. You're stocking it away. This won't change when you get married. Dude, you need to take some introspection time before you get married. Also, you desperately need a prenup. Prenup. Not the a-hole. NTA. Most definitely see a lawyer and get a prenuptial agreement. If you split, she gets nothing from what you have now. Never give her anything from these rentals, as that could set a precedent for future disbursements. Keep all money from your rentals and other ventures separate. Do not put her on the deed of your residence. Three more things, one, absolutely nail down who is paying what for the wedding and the honeymoon. No, you do not pay the majority of it. Two, all wedding expenses must be paid before the wedding. If not, guess who will be on the hook for them? 3. And this is a big one, all of her credit card debt needs to be cleared post haste. All future credit card debt is hers to pay off. Do not have any joint accounts. You might also get a copy of her credit report before you see the lawyer about the prenup. If she balks at any of this, you might want to reconsider the entire situation. Not the a-hole. As a female, I want you to really take a look at the differences in your relationship. When I was in pre-marriage counseling, the therapist said, the problems and fights you have now, are going to be the problems and fights you have in the future. Whatever it is, money slash intimacy slash family, those problems don't go away with marriage. You're both so different with money, you're always going to fight about it. Furthermore, the fact that you bought low and are making money and she doesn't see that as a good thing, tells me she is not smart. Like, this is some common sense stuff. Think long and hard about marrying her, dude. Now for the update. So, the conversation didn't happen until the weekend of the 14th of March. Life got in the way. It started fine, but quickly went south and ended in a big fight that degenerated into a lot of petty crap slinging by the end. She accused me of not trusting her, fair, and I pointed out that her habits make it basically impossible to trust her with money anyway. Probably not my proudest moment. But I did again make it clear, in no uncertain terms, that the properties are staying in the LLC and I won't sell them, and that the financial decisions regarding them would be mine alone. I may have also had a few choice words about the princess for a day wedding she wanted. After a couple of weeks of avoiding each other, and not talking, and me sleeping in the basement of the townhouse, I said I wanted to hit the pause button and leave for a while. She was upset, but didn't say much. I loaded up my things and went to my parents' house and told them what happened. They told me I could stay as long as I needed. Somewhere near the end of April, I got a call from her dad out of the blue, what the hell, demanding to know what was going on, and why I had broken things off. I tried to explain what had been going on, but he was the angry dad of an upset young woman, and I don't think much got through. That call ended with him calling me a scumbag and hanging up on me. I've only had a few properly long-term relationships and in my lifetime, but that's the first time I've had an angry father yell at me about one. There's been no contact since. I'm sad that just over four years of my life with someone, went up in smokes like this, but that's the way she goes I guess. My parents didn't seem very surprised when I showed up, so maybe I really was the last one to know what was going on, like so many redditors were pointing out. For some good news, and also the thing that reminded me to update my reddit post, is that yesterday, I bought another house, one for me to live in. A tiny little brick post-war brick ranch in an old subdivision about 20 minutes from my rentals. It needs work, but I'm looking forward to having a project to take my mind off things. It's going to be strange living on my own again, but I think I'll manage. Now for some closing comments. Jesus, if my new partner and spouse to be at basically a third income, I would be high-fiving every person I met about how lucky we were. Damn dude, good job getting out of that one. It must be really hard seeing four years disappear, but sometimes we don't see the real person until it is too late. Yeah but. Princess for a day wedding. Yeah, good choice dude. I could not imagine putting up with someone like that. I like to save and spend as little as possible. I also can get selling all the properties, just to turn around and waste it all for a huge wedding or honeymoon. Also, since the comments on the other post are locked, I'll ask here. Can someone please explain to me when then being a landlord make you an a-hole? I could get a fope he was a crappy landlord, 
but some of the comments were just calling him an a-hole for just renting out properties. Probably because we're all trapped renting because wealth when managed properly, tends to grow exponentially and is hoarded in families through generations, so all the property is owned by a small percentage of people like OP who can afford to live off passive income alone, while the rest of us who weren't born lucky, barely cover our ever-increasing rent cost with stagnant wages and rapid inflation slowly rising, while we struggle not to drown in the river of figurative crap that is our lives. Or something like that, I don't know. Having her dad call to yell at you, a grown man, is another flag to add to the pile of red flags. Glad you got out. She probably told dear daddy a lie about what happened, because why else would daddy go and defend her? And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.